So, let me put this on YouTube later. We'll see. So, how far have you guys gotten with use substitution? You guys can either type it or you guys can audio it. It's up to you. Use substitution. Are you guys getting it? Is it still confusing? You guys need more examples? Because after use substitution, we still have like a couple of more different ways of taking an integral. Use substitution, I would think, is one of the more easier ones. Easier ones to spot, at least. And that made sense? OK, pretty much getting it. OK, good. Um, we can move on today then, and we'll look at if we can get to. We'll do two different types. Sorry, the stream kind of started kind of late. Um, do I normally do streaming at eleven or two? Do you guys anybody remember when's the last time I did it? I can't remember. I was just with my regular calculus class at the last period. If you guys want to join that class? Let me know, I'll send you the, the Zoom account also. And we are planning to meet at one o'clock. But this last class, we met from one to like 2.30, so it went way long. <clears throat> okay, um, does anyone have any questions on the worksheet that I provided before? We can go through any of those questions if you guys got stuck. Uh, this was this page here. This is uh, out of a teacher in Diamond Bar High School. Sorry about these little sections here. Like this stuff here. What symbol do you think uh, some of these should be? Right? Hmm. And then, but down here is our, little, any other questions? Anyone get stuck? One through, sorry, one through 24, no takers. So we can move on. Moving on, going once, going twice, moving on. Just only seven of you guys, not that many, not a great, um, idea of how much you guys know, but let's move on then. Okay. All right, we'll do this one. So not every problem can be done with U substitution. Some can and some can't. If you look at the problems here, number one, two, um, three, for these look kind of like U substitution. They kind of look like what we did on our last example. And if you look at problem number one, you could say, hey, you, number one is a U substi substitution problem. And I want to fault you for, for thinking that. I definitely wouldn't. Uh, let's go ahead and try to change this. I want to give it right on this. Go ahead and throw this into, I want to do a different one. Go ahead and split screen this. I'm going to add a new page. Okay. So number one, I wouldn't fault you if I think that's U sub. So let's let's look at a U sub problem that looks similar to this. It's an integral of x over x squared plus one dx. That kind of looks like our number one problem, but it's not. If you look at the denominator, it's an x squared rather than an x. Now, as I try to give you guys hints before how to spot a u substitution problem, is that you go ahead and you ask yourself, hey, what would be u? And if I want, let's say the denominator to be u, 
take the derivative of it right away. And what's the derivative of x squared? The derivative of x squared is 2x. And this x and this x will divide out and we're golden, okay? And that's our goal. Our goal is to get rid of any extra x's, any extra variables that make this integral problem look a little more difficult than it should. It's like, it's too messy. So u sub allows us to get rid of a part of it to make that problem look like one of the identities that we already know. Look like one of the identities that we already know. Okay, so in this problem here, let's go ahead and do this, solve this u sub. u is equal to x squared plus one. After you write the u, automatically go ahead and take the derivative of it. Derivative of x squared is two x. The derivative of one is zero. So we're left with um, dx here. dx is du over 2x. We always rewrite this. Integral of x over, we call x squared plus 1u. And dx is now being substituted for du over 2x. Nice. We got rid of our variables through division. We're left with the integral of 1 over u du. And just to help you guys out, see this too? That's a constant. And we can write constants in the front. Anyone have a question about this constant? Okay. All right. Now, if you guys look at your identity sheets, um, I, had, I gave Mr. O'Brien, I think, a set of integral sheets for you guys to memorize. Does anybody remember what is the integral of 1 over u du? Anybody remember? Of what? What is the integral of this guy here? What's the integral of one? R10. Mm. If you have the sheet, if you guys, oh, you got it on the second guess. Yeah, it's going to be natural log. This straight identity is the integral of one over u. Du is natural log of u. Don't get the plus c. Yeah. So whenever it's one over something, oftentimes that is natural log. Good job. So this becomes one half natural log of u plus c. And instead of writing the u, I'm gonna go to substitute in x squared plus one, right? That's what u equal to. That's why we like u sub. u sub is pretty easy, pretty clean. Now, if we tried u sub with this new problem here, number one, let's see if it would work out. If I said the integral of x over x plus one dx, and we said x, sorry, u is equal to one x plus one, du is equal to dx, because the derivative of x is dx, derivative of one is zero. This is what I call a no cost substitution integral of x over u, right? Let's go with that part right here. And dx becomes du. We are still left with leftovers. And we can't integrate because there's more than one variable. We can't integrate because there's more than one variable. So what am I going to do? Easy, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say U substitution doesn't work. Does not work. Instead, let's look at a different problem. Let's look at an easier problem, just for to get our brain juices going. What if I wrote one, sorry, um, let's say, sorry, our example. The integral of x squared plus x over x dx. Can I simplify this problem? Can I divide this by x and this by x? This could be written instead as integral of x squared divided by x is x, and x divided by x is one. Wouldn't that be a lot easier of a problem? Yeah. What if I wrote the sine of x cubed plus x squared over x squared? 
Could I reduce the problem and make it easier? Yeah, this would be x plus 1 dx, right? And we can take the integral of that. Now, what if the problem looked like this? The integral of x squared plus x plus 1 over x. You might say, hey, we could try u sub, and we could try u sub. And if I tried u sub, u maybe would be this, because it's a little more complicated. But I said u was equal to x squared plus x plus 1. du is equal to 2x plus 1. Hey, look, this x and this x, wait. Hmm. But even if I tried, dx equals to du over 2x plus 1. If I rewrite this, integral of u over x, and we substitute dx for du, does a 2x plus 1 cancel out? It kind of just gets more messy. So it does not work. So we have several methods to integrate. One is u sub. One is using street identities. And this third one is to divide. We are going to divide, divide, divide first, and it'll actually make the problem a lot easier. Let me get rid of all these options. Here we go, let's get rid of this. We're just going to divide. So our first problem here, let's go ahead and divide. Sorry, let me resell this. We are going to, darn it. CD. Let's divide x squared, x, and 1 over x. So it'll be the integral. x squared divided by x is x. x divided by x is 1. x, wait, 1 divided by x is 1 over x. And Mr. O'Brien went reviewed with you guys our properties of integration. Now, if there's a plus sign, this is actually three separate integrals. You could write the integral of x dx plus the integral of 1 dx plus the integral of 1 over x dx. Yeah, and in our brains, that's what we're doing. But we can just leave it as it is here. That's also great. Getting used to that is fine. But also thinking this in your head is super important. Now, what is the integral of x by itself? That's going to be our power rule. This will be, give myself some space, x squared over 2. Why? Because it's 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. The integral of 1 is just going to be x. And what is the integral of 1 over x dx? Did we just say that just a moment ago? Hmm. The integral of 1 over u du is natural log. And actually, that's our gimmick for these problems. The gimmick here is that the integral of 1 over x is really plus natural log of x, and then plus c, since it's an indefinite integral. OK, so u substitution doesn't always work. And if it doesn't work, looking at the problem, Maybe long division, or maybe division is going to work. And in some cases, this might be a long division problem. So let's go back to number one. And we are just going to straight divide that problem. The integral of x over x plus 1 is dx. I can't divide x by x plus 1. So we are going to do long division here. You guys remember long division? There are three steps. We match. We try to match the front number with the front number. Let's go ahead and try that. x times what is x? That's 1. We multiply x plus 1. We multiply the front and the back. That binomial term gets multiplied by 1. And then the so first step is to match, step 1. Step 2 is to multiply. And step 3 is to subtract. And then it comes a negative x and a negative 1. So we're left with negative 1. 
Can I make x look like negative 1? Nope, so we're done. So negative 1 over x plus 1, if you remember that. So where do we write this problem? This problem becomes This problem becomes integral of 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. Cool thing is we know what the integral of 1 is. The integral of 1 dx is just x. And the integral of, sorry, that's a minus sign, 1 over x plus 1 dx. Turns out this is actually a u substitution problem. If u is equal to x plus 1, du is equal to dx, no cost uh, substitution. Uh, 1 over u du is just minus ln of u plus c, where u is x plus 1. On the side, I don't know if you guys remember. Oh, I guess this. On the side, if you want to take the derivative, just to prove it to yourself, d of dx of natural log of x plus 1. What's the derivative of natural log? That gives us the fraction 1 over copying the intern inside plus 1. The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. And then this back here, if you want to double check. That's your answer. Let's look at problem number two. The integral of 2x cubed over x squared minus 1 dx. Does u substitution work here? Hmm. The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. Does 2x get rid of an x cubed? Nope. So what we're going to do is long division. x minus 1, and we're doing 2x cubed. We're trying to divide x squared minus 1 by uh, 2x cubed. Anyone have a question right now about the setup? You guys are OK? I hear a note. You guys have a question? Try raising your hand. I think if you guys raise your hand, I'll see it on my board. Oh no. I'll have to see here. Or make a noise. You can hear you guys if you make a noise. Okay. So we do the long, long division. So x squared goes into 2x cubed. To make it match, we need a 2 and we need an x. See, if I multiply this by a 2 and an x, that would become 2x cubed. So we multiply it by the binomial, so minus 2x. We then subtract. Three steps, we match, we multiply. First step, we match, we multiply, that's step two. And then we subtract, step three. Match, multiply, and subtract. OK, that becomes a negative. That becomes a positive. Of course, we want those to cancel out. That's why we matched. We left with 2x. I can't make 2x look like x squared, so we're done. Let's write the fraction. Plus 2x over x squared minus 1. So our integral, instead of being 2x cubed divided by x squared minus 1, we're left with 2x plus 2x over x squared minus 1. Sorry, dx at the end. dx. So this is two separate integrals. This one's the front easy. It's 2x squared over 2. Power rule says it's n plus 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2 over 1 plus 1. And then on the right side, 
the integral of 2x over x squared minus 1 dx. That's going to be u sub. That's right. The derivative of, let's go take the derivative in our heads, or u is equal to x squared minus 1. du would be 2x, which is going to get rid of the 2x up here. dx. dx is equal to du over 2x. Let's go ahead and replace it. The integral of 2x over u, and then dx became du over 2x. See you later. We're left with the integral of 1 over u du. We've seen this guy before. Let's go ahead and write it in. Plus 1 over u. Sorry, my bad. Plus natural log of u, which is over here, x squared minus 1 plus c. That's your answer. Yay. Besides that simplifying the two, yeah, that's our answer perfectly. Winning. Let's see. Okay. Um. Well, some of our problems look look a little harder. I want you guys to look at: Are all these problems here going to be division problems? Are all these problems here going to be division problems? Number four looks crazy. Number three looks confusing. So let's do those problems quickly to see um, what we can do with them. So problem number three is actually a trig setup problem. How do I know that? It's because I can't make cosine cancel out with a one plus sine x, nor can I divide. But some of you guys might remember a little rule called Pythagorean. And the rule says uh, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And if I write, how do I solve for cosine? This is cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Turns out I can factor out 1 plus sine and 1 plus cosine. Sorry, one sorry, one plus sign again. Ah, oh, my, my mistake, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. One plus sign and one minus sign. And if you notice here, this one minus sign and, sorry, not one minus sign, this one plus sign and the one plus sign here will end up dividing out. And we're left with a problem that goes the integral integral of 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x, 1 minus sine x. Hmm. Now what do I do here? I do here. I got stuck. One plus sign. I see what you're looking at. U sub. If I do use a U sub, one minus sine of x, the problem with that, we take the du is equal to negative sine, no, negative cosine, sorry, negative cosine of x, and that. doesn't get rid of anything on top. 
There is, oh, I got it. Do I? Yes, I got, oh my goodness. So we try something, we got stuck here, doesn't work. So go back, try again with another process. So I try this instead. We'll write one over cosine squared X plus sine of x over cosine squared x. If you remember your trig identities, one over cosine can be rewritten as a reciprocal uh, to be secant squared x plus uh, sine x over cosine squared x dx. Now, my first question is, if you look at your identity sheet, do you have an identity that says the integral of secant squared x dx? It will be one of our basic sine, cosine, tangent rules. The integral of secant squared. Anybody remember that off the top of your brain? Oh, okay. thank you, Penelope. That is tangent x, done. Easy, okay? Now, this guy here, gonna take a little more work. Anyone wanna have a method that they wanna try to use? Hmm, I can't divide cosine by sine. Hmm. Why don't we try u sub? If u was cosine, just cosine, not cosine squared, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. And check this out. This sine and this sine will divide out. So it does take some experimenting. It does take some practice. Because if one way doesn't work, you have to quickly rush to do it the other way. Or try another way. So this becomes a sine. Uh, x over integral sine x over u squared and that becomes du over negative sine of x okay this is because dx so du over sine of x negative is equal to dx over here that's how we substitute that in and these divide out and we're left with a negative Integral of 1 over u squared du. I'm going to rewrite this because I don't like to write my, I don't like to write these fractions on the denominator. I'd rather rewrite it as a negative exponent. So I'm going to rewrite that as u to the negative 2 power. And can you simplify the negative fraction? You might be able to. Do you mean this initial fraction from where we started? or from right here. Well, up here. Second tangent. You could change it to second tangent. Yeah, you could. And then we're going to get the same answer us doing it this way. So we're writing this as, to finish this up, negative uh, plus one over negative two plus one. That gives us u negative one over negative one. To rewrite that, to plug that back in. It's going to be a positive uh, 1 over, and u is cosine, is equal to 1 over u. So you guys can see it. And then u is cosine plus c. And as you mentioned before, um, we're going to get there real quick. Tangent of x plus the reciprocal of cosine is secant. 
secant of x plus c. And that's our answer. Now, um, you mentioned, could we change that to secant tangent? And you're right, we can. And that's a very smart move over here. If I went a different route, is everyone okay following along? Let's go a different route. What well, if I wrote this as sine sine over cosine, one over cosine. And you're right, this is a tangent and secant, which may be written as secant tangent. And if you look at your identity sheet, if I take the integral of secant tangent, what do we get? We get secant. So both of these methods would work. Your method is actually faster than the u substitution when you said secant tangent, and that's great. If you guys don't remember your identities when it comes to the sine cosine tangent, uh, there's a dumb, dumb trick or dumb slogan I have in my class. And the slogan to help my kids remember the integral of secant and tangent, the integral, sorry, let's go for for the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. That's just what you have to remember. Because when you go on a tangent, you're totally crazy. See, it has nothing to do with tangent. It's secant. Uh, hopefully, Ms. Yagi proved this. If not, uh, she probably proved it. If not, we can go over it one day. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Uh, excuse me. It sounds like a sneeze. Secant tangent. Excuse me. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Excuse me. The derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent. Cosecant cotangent. It's just the other guy. Secant becomes cosecant, tangent becomes cotangent. Except this is negative. If you guys haven't memorized it, you guys really have to memorize these. So going backwards, if I take the integral, that gets, takes me back to the secant. This takes me back to cosecant. Secant squared takes me back to tangent, which was demonstrated all in this problem. Okay, any questions about this problem? No questions on this? Oh, the sneeze got me, oh, yeah. Second tangent, excuse me. Maybe not the most PC given our climate today, but when I taught this back in like October, I guess the start of flu season, or November, that made a lot more sense. Second tangent. Excuse me. Um, let's see, any other ones here that I could? If you look, that's like some other ones I hear that might have been trick questions. Look at some other ones here that might be trick questions. Like, over here, if you look at 13, Could you do u substitution on this problem? And which would you be your u? If I chose cosine to be my u, what's the derivative of cosine? Sine? Bam, that got rid of that sine. Over here, if my u was ln of v, what's the derivative of natural log? That's one over v, and that'll cancel out with this v here. What about up here? Would u substitution work here? If I say, what's the derivative of x squared? x, not enough. This would actually be a long division problem. Or not long division, but uh, separate your variables into different fractions. Over here, would the u substitution work here? What's the derivative of 2x squared plus 1? That's 4x, and that x would divide out that x there. So not every problem is going to be long division. Not every problem is going to be a separation of variables. Sorry, a separation of fractions. 
not every problem will be used up. It's up to you to figure out which gimmick would work. If we look at this one here, if I say sine is my u value, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine, bam, gets rid of that cosine. This one here, if I say uh, x squared is my u, that doesn't get rid of x cubed. And if I say x cubed is my u, that doesn't get rid of x squared on the denominator. If it was on the numerator, it would have worked. So depending on the problem, um, really depends on which one works. This one here, this tangent problem here, this tangent problem, when you see a tangent problem, there is no integral of tangent. There is none. But you can separate this, and we'll do the problem here. And this is our last problem we'll do for today. Because this is kind of running kind of long. Sorry about that. Um, tangent. Integral tangent of 2x minus 7 dx. We're going to rewrite this as what? In What's a trig identity for tangent? If you guys can think, what's the trig identity for tangent? It's a, a fraction of sine 2x minus 7 over a cosine 2x minus 7. And I want you guys to think of this guy as my u. If this is my u, what's the derivative of cosine? Sine, and that gets rid of the top. So we'll do the problem quickly. So you substitute in problems, hopefully you guys are practicing them. It can actually be very quick once you keep practicing. U is equal to cosine of 2x minus 7. Du would be negative sine. 2x minus 7 chain rule, but then the derivative of x squared minus 7 would be 2. dx, so du equals to dx with a negative sine 2x minus 7 and a 2 in the front. Now, when you go back and rewrite that u substitution problem, make sure you do write it out. That's if you need the time. Some of you guys don't need the time, so you guys can step steps, which is kind of fine with me. But if you guys don't understand what's going on, write it out. It actually makes a lot of sense. It's really just pieces in a puzzle. And we see that sine and sine. And we're left with a 2 here. That's a constant. Write it on the outside. And we've seen that problem over and over and over again. The integral of 1 over u is just so 1 half natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And what is u? What is u? u is back over here as cosine. Oops, I need one more space. Cosine of 2x minus seven. Okay. All right, you're done. That was problem number nine. Answer here number nine. And we have the exact same answer. That is a win. Want to be negative one half. Hmm. Negative one half. You are right. And that's where I miss that negative. You're right, hundred percent. Thank you for catching that. That's a negative one. Yep, you're right, 100%. Thank you for catching that. You guys are great. Okay, any other questions? I would say go ahead and practice these problems. I'll post this up on your Schoology website. You guys can take a look at these problems. The answers are below. Uh, I would do them because if you're gonna get a grade for this class, you have to do work. And I'll probably, be, if they have me doing the worksheets, in terms of work, should we do your worksheets or Mr. Brian's? I would do them both. You guys have a lot of spare time. My worksheets are actually not that long. See, there's 17 questions, but a lot of them is just practicing that skill. Mr. Brian's worksheet is about the same. Mr. Brian's doesn't have the answer key. I think she's been trying to write some of them, but this is a great way since the answer key is here, you can check your answers. In the end, I think to get the grade, 
because we'll be having to turn in whatever Miss O'Brien gives you, and as well as whatever I'm assigning you currently during the break. And that's how you guys can get your easy grade. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the administration plan. Uh, I don't even know they they know I'm teaching class. Um, so there goes that. Um, if we were back at school, Mr. Brian would have been helping you guys out, but I don't expect Mr. Brian to be teaching you guys over the internet or anything like that. Okay. Um, we'll have another Zoom tomorrow about two o'clock, depends how long my first class goes. If you guys want to join on that first class, I think we'll start reviewing some concepts. Um, I can actually, let me give you guys that Zoom ID number in case you guys want to join. This is their Zoom. One of the cool things about Zoom, it'll actually save um, the meeting ID numbers. Okay. So let's stop recording now, actually.